This video is in many ways a throwback to my early YouTube days, back before this channel existed and I was on my personal channel, before I made videos somewhat regularly, even before I did those random music videos. My first videos were these pieces where I compared the Star Wars movies, the originals versus the special editions. This was back in 2008. I did three videos and the third actually managed to get 100 views overnight, but ended up with some negative comments on it. Read that. Ain't no bitches gonna hunt no ghosts. Oh, no, no. And rather than read any of them, I decided to be a coward and delete the videos and never look back. Well, I guess as until now. I do not have any of the old footage and part of me would like to see it, but another part of me knows how much I hate my old videos. Anyways, this video will not be like usual at the movies and will rather be me going point by point at all the significant changes between the two different versions and rating whether or not the change was a net positive or if the original was better. For this comparison, I will largely be using the Harmy Despecialized Editions. You should check them out. I will post a link to his channel in the description. He has really done a great job with these. I have a very bad feeling about this. There are some very basic superficial changes such as better sound mixing and improved visual effects and because of this, the special editions will start this with a point before I even go into noteworthy changes. This is it! Throughout the movie, we've already seen lots of CGI inserted into the special editions, and for the most part, it doesn't distract from the story. This quick sequence where they drive through a bunch of random CGI crap as they enter Mos Eisley is really distracting, however, and the CGI has dated incredibly poorly. Lucas said he wanted this to establish that this is an alien place, except the scene where they enter the bar is still in the movie, and it is far more effective at establishing this. This bit with them driving through random crap is redundant, and has not aged well. Point for the original. Uh, most of the best freighter pilots that will be found here only watch a step. This place could be a little rough. Early on, we get what is perhaps the most controversial change of the whole trilogy, the whole Greedo Shoots First change. George Lucas has made it abundantly clear that he felt this change was necessary. In a recent interview with the Washington Post, Lucas explained his decision to alter the scene, saying, quote, Han Solo was going to marry Leia, and you look back and say, should he be a cold-blooded killer? Because I was thinking mythologically, should he be a cowboy? Should he be John Wayne? And I said, yeah, he should be John Wayne. And when you're John Wayne, you don't shoot people first. You let them have the first shot. It's a mythological reality that we hope our society pays attention to. If you're my father, if you love me, you'll shoot him. Well, I'm your father. And I sure love you, so... Han Solo is a hero, and as a hero, he should not shoot first. He shouldn't start fights. From this perspective, he has a very solid position, but somehow it seems like he's missing a point with his own creation. If you play Dungeons and Dragons, you should have an understanding of alignments. Your typical good guy would be lawful good. You follow the rules and you want to ensure that good prevails in the end. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you get chaotic evil. You want evil to prevail, and you don't care how you get there. There are other variations. You have lawful evil, in which you follow the rules of the ultimate goal of letting evil prevail. Then you have chaotic good. You want good to prevail, but you don't care about breaking the rules to get there. At this point in the story, I won't even call Han Solo chaotic good. He is helping Luke and Obi-Wan, but completely for money. Let's just say we'd like to avoid any imperial entanglements. Well, that's the real trick, isn't it? And it's going to cost you something extra. 10000 all in advance. He doesn't want to save the princess. Marching into the detention area is not what I had in mind. But they're going to kill her! Better her than me. He even leaves the rebels when they need all the help they can get in their Death Star run. All right. Well, take care of yourself, Han. 
I guess that's what you're best at, isn't it? Han is chaotic neutral at the beginning of this movie, meaning he doesn't have an interest in who prevails and pretty much will do whatever for his own self-interest. When Han shoots Greedo first, it firmly establishes that he isn't a good guy. He just isn't imperial. This is what makes him coming to save Luke at the end of the movie have such an impact. It is the first time in the movie we have seen him take a chance and risk his own life to help when there is literally nothing in it for him. His first real selfless act in the movie. Han shoots first because at this point in the movie, he's a smuggler, a mercenary, a bounty hunter. He is whatever he needs to be to get by and survive to the next day. He is not a hero until the end of the movie. Having him wait for Greedo to shoot first lessens the impact of him doing a heroic act at the end of the movie. Add to it the fact that seeing Greedo be such a terrible shot means he's not a real threat to Han, so why does Han even need to shoot him at all? Greedo shooting first very much lessens the arc for Han Solo, and as of such, lessens the movie. Point for the original. 17,000. Those guys must really be desperate. This could really save my neck. Get back to the ship and get her ready. My monkey. The next significant bit is a delayed scene that has been reinserted into the movie. There are some major issues with this scene. Let's start with the superficial. At this point, Jabba the Hutt was just going to be a guy in a robe. Because of this, they have Han walking around him as Jabba moves around because that is what the original actor did. The CGI, even though it is updated from the original, does not look remotely real and holds nothing on the puppeteering in Return of the Jedi. Since Han walks behind Jabba at one point, they even have Han step on his tail. And I get boarded sometimes. You think I had a choice? It looks very fake. For that moment, Han doesn't move remotely naturally at all. The whole scene just looks so fake, and time has not been kind to it. Now let's look at this from a story standpoint. The scene is completely redundant. The idea here is to establish that Han owes Jabba money, and Jabba will do anything to get it. But we already have the Greedo scene, which is much more effective at establishing that. Greedo posed a risk to Han, although apparently he can't shoot worth a damn, so maybe not much of one. Jabba just shows up here. Han says, I'll have your money, back off, and Jabba does just that. See if I do do empty, Jabba. 15, Jabba, don't push it. Do do eating. This scene makes Jabba look like a wimp who is easily pushed around by Han. He doesn't feel remotely like the same character we see in Return of the Jedi. I was just on my way to pay you back, and I got a little sidetracked. It's not my fault. Adding this scene gives us a Jabba that doesn't look or act remotely like the Jabba we get later and is also completely unnecessary and redundant. Point for the original. What a piece of junk! She'll make point five past light speed. She may not look like much, but she's got it where it counts, kid. I've made a lot of special modifications myself. Next, we get to a change that a special edition should be for. It's a huge continuity error where in this one scene on the Millennium Falcon, his lightsaber has this subtle green glow despite being completely blue earlier and in the rest of the movies. In the special edition, they fix this, making the lightsaber blue to match the rest of the series. This is an easy point for the special edition, except that's not what happened. If you watch the original, you see that very faint green glow to the lightsaber, but it's not what I would call an outright continuity error until they do this weird color correction with the special editions that actually makes the green more obvious and for some reason do nothing to correct it even though that would be one of the points of doing a special edition at all. This is an issue they amplified with the color correction and never bothered to fix. This ends up a point for the original out of nothing more than pure laziness. Kid, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff, but I've never seen anything to make me believe there's one all-powerful force controlling everything. This is one of those changes that is honestly debatable. It's good for the audience to meet Biggs, to give his death more impact, and really help place the audience more in Luke's position at the end. In the original, we just get a mention of him, and when he dies, we get the sense that Luke knows him, but it's not very solid. Yet the scene also distracts from the pace and takes away from the urgency of the moment. The Death Star is coming to blow us up, yet let's stop and talk for a few moments. Wilma, I promise you, whatever scum did this, not one man on this force will rest for one minute until he's behind bars. Now let's grab a bite to eat. Yeah. This is a genuine change that has pluses and minuses. The loss of pace 
is a significant minus to the movie, so personally, I find the original more enjoyable. But the special editions should have some changes, and scenes reincorporate are just expected, and unlike the Jabba scene, this doesn't diminish future characters and look out of place with date special effects. This scene does change the experience as a type of edition that is perfect for a re-release like the special editions. I'll give this point to the special editions. Look, it's only one more season. Yeah, that's what she said when Biggs and Tank left. Where are you going? Looks like I'm going nowhere. Honestly, there is a real sense of wonder from the original version that really translates to the viewing that the special edition loses. The special edition doesn't ruin this great movie, as many may claim, but it is certainly inferior. Next, let's see how Empire fares. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. Pain don't hurt. 